Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Drainville. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at Lab Tau Inserm in Lyon, France. Today, I'm going to present our work on the simulation of transcranial focused ultrasound propagation for the prediction of thermal lesions and patient selection. Since this work is being presented at the Focused Ultrasound Foundation Conference, I know I don't have to go into great detail to explain the wide variety of applications or benefits of applying focused ultrasound in the brain. Of course, the primary difficulty of these applications is the ability to produce acoustic focusing through the skull. The high density and speed of sound of the skull produces strong reflections and distortions of acoustic waves that must be accounted for. Additionally, human skulls are heterogeneous with geometries that are complex and highly variable. This means that in order to focus through the skull, we have to account for the phase operations, refractions, and attenuation, which degrades acoustic focusing at the target. To address these challenges, one of the most important systems for transcranial ultrasound is the Exoblate InsightTech Neurosystem. It's an ultrasound transducer composed of 1,024 elements arranged in a hemisphere operating at 670 kilohertz. The large surface allows for focusing across the surface of the head with phase correction for each of its elements to account for the presence of the skull. Skull material properties are most commonly estimated using CT scans, which provide both detailed information on the shape of the skull, as well as measurements of bone density, which can then be used to estimate acoustic properties of the skull, including the speed of sound and the attenuation. A problem, which is illustrated in the figure on the left, is that there are many different published conversion algorithms to estimate the speed of sound, and they don't all agree with each other. There's even less agreement on how best to derive attenuation in the skull from CT data. And it's important to know how uncertainty in these properties can affect transcranial focusing. To help address these questions, we turn to a simulation platform called SIVA Healthcare, which provides ray tracing modeling of ultrasound propagation for the calculation of acoustic fields and tissues, as well as thermal modeling. The software is capable of handling custom transducer models and complex tissue geometries with an advanced GUI that makes the software user-friendly, customizable, and allows for a wide variety of treatment parameters. So we want to provide a better understanding of the role of skull properties in transcranial focusing, particularly with a focus on numerical modeling. For this, we have three primary objectives. The first is to provide a parametric simulation study using the SIVA healthcare platform that quantifies the sensitivity of ultrasound focal quality to changes in material properties, such as density, wave speed, and attenuation, which in real world application, the variation of these parameters may arise due to uncertainty in conversion from CT data. The second objective is to examine the significance of internal reflection and mode conversion and how these factors can change depending on the degree of skull heterogeneity. And finally, the third objective of this work is to use a numerical bioheat transfer equation model with the acoustic model in order to estimate temperature change in a tissue mimicking phantom and then compare those results to experimental measurements obtained using MR thermometry. For the acoustic simulations, once the field near the focal point was calculated by SIVA, a MATLAB script was written to interpolate results and improve the spatial resolution of the acoustic field. Then to quantify focalization, we use the maximum acoustic amplitude near the focus, the focal offset, which is given by the distance from the position of the maximum amplitude to the geometric focus of the transducer, and the focal volume, which was determined as the size of a continuous volume with an amplitude that's greater than one half of the maximum amplitude. So for a parametric study looking at changes in material properties, we'll be focusing on skull density, wave speed, and attenuation. So to examine the role of uncertainty in the, in the skull density, simulations per, were performed with the skull density uh, that varied between 1600 and 2400 kilograms per cubic meter. For each density value, simulations were performed with three different speed of sound values, which were given by the max minimum, maximum, and average speed provided across all conversion algorithms described by Wang et al. with a phase correction profile based on the average uh, speed of sound value in order to examine the effect of uncertainty that exists between these, algorithm, uh, these different conversion algorithms. To examine the uh, effect of changes in speed of skull speed of sound independent of other skull properties, Simulations were performed in which the speed of sound in the skull was varied between 2,000 and 3,600 meters per second. The phase delay profile was calculated based on a presumed speed of skull, speed of sound in the skull of 2,634 meters per second. And then this profile was kept constant while the actual speed of sound in the skull was varied from 2,000 to 3,600 meters per second. 
And finally, given the amount of disagreement in how best to derive attenuation properties from CT data, simulations were performed in which the attenuation coefficient of the skull was varied between zero and one and a half dB per millimeter with the speed of sound and density held constant. So first looking at the results from varying density. Uh, here we can see the results with the minimum, average, and maximum wave speed plotted as a function of density, where you have dashed line for skull sample one and a solid line for a second skull sample. On the left, we can see a decrease in the acoustic amplitude at the focus with increase in density, which is expected as higher densities and the associated increase in speed of sound will increase the amount of energy reflected from the skull. The shift in the focal position showed little sensitivity to changes in skull density and speed of sound. While there's a greater focal offset for higher density values, the maximum offset reached a value of only about 0.6 millimeters. And then finally on the right, we can see how the focal volume changes with density and speed of sound. The significant increase in focal volume is seen due to the effects of defocusing, which occurs most at higher density values, where there is the most agreement, disagreement between conversion algorithms. In these figures, we can see the same measures of focal quality while when the speed of sound is varied with other properties held constant, where the dashed line, uh, vertical dashed line indicates the value that was used for the calculation of the phase delay profile. Now the maximum amplitude shows very high sensitivity to changes in the speed of sound. And interestingly for our skull one model, a decrease in the speed of sound actually caused an increase in the maximum amplitude. Here it's believed that the defocusing effect is offset by a reduction in the acoustic impedance, which increases the energy transmission through the skull. The focal offset shows a rapid increase at, as the speed of sound deviates from the value used to calculate the phase delay profile and reached a maximum of nearly 1.5 millimeters. Finally, the focal volume shows a initially more gradual, but eventually much more drastic change with a focal volume increasing by a factor of almost 10. Finally, for attenuation, the maximum amplitude showed an expected exponential dependence on skull attenuation, which while the focal offset showed almost no change and the focal volume showed relatively small changes. Shifting to our use of the layered skull model, we wanted to examine the importance of shear wave mode conversion and internal reflection and how that may change depending on the degree of skull heterogeneity. Now, this is easy to do within the SIVA simulation model as the ray tracing method allows us to either include or neglect any contributions that may arise from shear waves or reflections within the skull. To vary the heterogeneity of each model, separate models of trabecular and cortical bone were generated and overlaid within the simulations. The level of heterogeneity was varied by changing the upper Hounsfield unit threshold used to generate trabecular bone layer. And here we can see how the volume of trabecular bone relative to the whole skull volume changes as a function of the Hounsfield unit threshold. The different uh, layers of skull bone were assigned unique material properties of density, longitudinal speed of sound, and shear, uh, shear speed of sound. The attenuation values were identical between the two layers as we wanted to try to isolate the effects of skull heterogeneity separate from just attenuation. We also included an average skull model which had the same geometry as the cortical layer, but had physical properties that were based on average skull properties, just to provide a point of reference. So here we can see how maximum amplitude, focal offset, and focal volume change as a function of trabecular fraction. Results from simulation that include shear waves are shown in red, those that include internal reflections are shown in blue, and results from simulations that don't include, include either shear waves or internal reflection are shown in green. So for both maximum amplitude and the focal volume, we see a gradual decrease in the focal quality as the degree of heterogeneity increases, but this actually reverses around a trabecular fraction volume of about 0.3. Now, if we look at skull models for two different values of trabecular fraction, we believe that the decrease in maximum amplitude and the increase in focal volume is not entirely due to just the likelihood of any individual ray meeting and being scattered from the boundaries between the cortical and trabecular layers, but due to the presence of more irregular boundaries that give rise to non-specular diffusion. After uh, examining the effects of shear wave, shear wave mode conversion and internal reflection in the layered skull model, we wanted to then use acoustic simulations with our numerical thermal model to estimate temperature rise at the focus. So for our thermal modeling, we considered a homogeneous skull model using skull model two filled with a brain tissue phantom material. The temperature field is simulated for acoustic 
towers ranging from 25 to 325 watts with 10 seconds on occasions at the geometric focus of the transducer. And then we compared simulations results with experimental MR thermometry. When we look at the maximum temperature rise as a function of acoustic power, again, there's a very strong agreement between the experimentally measured temperatures and the value we obtained from, from experiment. And, and if we look at the temperature distribution at the target, for two different values of acoustic power, 100 watts on the left and 325 watts on the right, uh, we see good agreement between these two uh, results, where the blue line denotes the temperature along the forward-backward axis and the red line along the left-right axis, with experimental data is uh, shown as the solid lines and simulation data is the dashed lines. So to help summarize, this work helps to quantify the effect of material property uncertainty on transcranial focal quality where you found that maximum amplitude was at a much greater sensitivity than focal position and volume overall. The effect of shear wave mode conversion and internal reflection within a heterogeneous or layered model of the skull was found to be negligible compared to just the effects of increasing skull heterogeneity, which may be attributable to non-specular scattering from irregular boundaries. Finally, we found good agreement between stimulated and experimental temperature rise in uh, tissue phantoms. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the organizations that generally supported and enabled this work. And I'd like to thank you for your attention during my presentation. I look forward to having the opportunity to answer any questions and seeing the other presentations during the rest of the conference. Thank you.